All right, guys, we're back with another video to help you take your disc golf game to the next level. You know, one of the most frustrating things in disc golf is walking up to a tee box, visualizing your shot, going through your tradition, going through your routine. Uh, you can see what you want your disc to do. You want it to fly just, just so down the fairway. You want it to take uh, just a little gentle fade to the basket and... Uh, maybe just kind of nestle up underneath it and you just walk up there and you take your two and, and you've got all this in your head and you've you've gone through it uh, maybe you're in tournament play or or uh, even with, just with a group of people and you're waiting your turn but this whole time you're sitting there and you've you've visualized everything you want to do that you want your disc to do and it's all going to end up perfect but then you get on the box and you throw the disc and it's just to the left or just to the right hits a tree off the box and now all of that that you visualize is just completely gone. You've 100% missed your intended line that you want to throw on, and that completely messes up uh, that entire hole for you. So today, we're gonna to be talking about that. We're talking about four reasons why you miss your lines. I'm super excited for this video. I think it's got a lot of great content for you guys. It's got a lot of um, ideas that can help uh, a lot of you really take your game to the next level with this one video. So stay tuned and we'll get started. All right, like I said, I'm really excited for this video, so I'm not gonna waste any time just getting right into it. Uh, we're gonna talk about four reasons why you miss your lines off the tee box and then ways that you can improve that. So your first reason why you're not hitting your line off the tee box is because of your feet. The biggest misconception I would say with uh, in, in working with the high schoolers and trying to get them into the game, uh, that the biggest misconception they have about how their feet are supposed to work is what direction their feet are supposed to go in as far as what it's in uh, relation to. You know, when we step up on the tee box, this is our end goal. This is what we're, we're wanting to get to. But this is not the direction that your feet have to be moving in. When you're standing on the tee box, your feet don't necessarily need to be moving towards the basket. Your feet need to be moving towards the intended line that you're wanting your disc to fly on. So uh, let me give you an example. You're staying on the tee box. The basket may be directly in front of you off the front end of the tee box. It doesn't take any sort of deviation. It is right there dead straight in front of you. Well, if you're wanting to throw a, a disc on a hyzer line, you, let's say you want your disc to sweep out to the right side of the fairway and then come diving down towards the basket. If I'm gonna throw a hyzer, I should not be walking you know, sideways in my X step. My feet should not be moving in the direction of the basket. My feet should be moving in the direction of that hyzer line. If my feet are not moving in the same direction that I'm wanting the disc to travel on, then my throw is going to be off. Okay, it's about to get a little weird now. Uh, I'm using this flat wall, uh, hopefully flat and straight wall in my home to help demonstrate the second reason why you're missing your lines when you throw off the tee box. And that second reason is your upper body, okay? So whenever you're actually uh, get going through your X step and you're ready to throw your backhand shot, your shoulders and your upper body do a lot to dictate the line that you're throwing that disc on. So let's take this, this flat wall uh, as my example, okay? This flat wall is going to represent the line that I want to throw my disc on. So when I throw a disc off uh, disc, I'm actually wanting to pull that disc on a straight line from you know, through my reach back, it needs to be on the line, and then when I follow through, it needs to be on that same line as well. Now you're actually pulling that disc from back here to that way. So, so I'm trying to hit that line. I need to keep this disc on that same line. Well, here's the problem that I see some of the beginner players and even a lot of students have this issue and some of you may have that same thing. So I'm gonna pretend this is my line. I'm gonna keep my disc on that line. Well, what a lot of the students will do is instead of using their shoulders, they actually just reach their arm back. Now, my disc is still on this line, but here's the problem. Whenever I go to rotate my body, I'm reaching my arm across, everything's kind of convoluted, it's really tight and compressed here. Whenever I try to turn, I can't. I, like, I literally, <laughs> I can't, I'm stuck. I'm completely stuck here. Now what that ends up causing your arm to do, if this wall were not here, my arm would actually be swinging out on an arc. Let me back up a little bit and show you 
I'd actually be coming across like this. So now my disc is actually on this line heading back into the office instead of on my intended line, which is right here. I'm trying to throw straight that way. The problem is not incorporating your shoulders enough, okay? You shouldn't be reaching across your body, okay? You shouldn't be reaching across your body. You should be reaching away from your body. And in order to reach away from your body and still, still keep that disc on the same line that you're intending it to be on, you must turn your shoulders. So instead of reaching straight back, I am going to turn my shoulders and reach, okay? And now whenever I pull my disc back on that same line, I'm pulling it through, I'm able to keep my, sh I'm able to rotate my shoulders back forward and come through. And now I'm able to, again, I'm incorporating my hips, I'm incorporating my shoulders, I'm reaching the disc away from my body, but I'm still on that same line, pulling it back in, away from my body, rotate your shoulders, pulling the disc back in, and I'm still able to keep it on this line the entire time. And I'm pulling the disc close to my body, keeping my hand on the opposite edge of that disc. My hand is against this wall. It's on this line that I'm trying to throw it on, but I'm keeping the disc here between my hand and my body, but I must rotate my shoulders. All right, the third reason why you're missing your lines off the tee box is because of confidence. Now, confidence is the first really solid example of we have in these four that will cause you to miss your line to the left. Uh, you know, not actually using your shoulders in your throw is going to cause you to pull more to the right, but your confidence level is going to cause you to dump shots off to the left and maybe hit a tree to your left. Now, um, when, you, when you have lack of confidence in your throw, uh, you may be intentionally stopping short. You're not following through. And the reason why is because you want to keep your eyes on the fairway. Now, it's very, very difficult to, to do this. I, this is probably my biggest issue is confidence. But what happens is you're not trusting your body to be doing the right thing. You're not trusting your body to propel the disc on the line that you're intending it to, to, to go on. As long as your mechanics are fine, you don't need to watch where the disc is going. The disc is going to go on that way. Theoretically, as long as your feet are moving in the right direction, you're incorporating your shoulders, you're pulling the disc across your chest, then you could throw that disc with your eyes closed and it would still go on the line that you're intending it to go on. Your eyesight down the fairway does not dictate that disc traveling on that line. You need to trust your body, trust your mechanics to just power that disc through. Just go up there and just rip it. Just go up there and rip it. Do not worry about, I must watch it go down the fairway. If you're focused on that, what's going to happen is after you reach back and you go to third, you're going to stop short and you're looking down that fairway. Well, what happens when I do that? I'm dropping my arm. I'm, I'm not following all the way through. I'm not getting that. I'm just hitting stuff on my bookshelf here. I'm not following all the way through to make sure that I'm seeing that disc on the line. Instead, I'm stopping to watch it. And that's what's going to have you like dump it off to the left because you're not really trusting your body to do the right thing. All right, we made it. Reason four why you're missing your lines on your tee box is probably because you're powering down instead of disking down. Uh, so let's say that um, you regularly throw your max distance driver here. Uh, let's say you regularly throw that uh, 250 or 300. Okay, that's, that's a, still a respectable shot. You're going to birdie a lot of holes in disc golf by being able to throw your driver 300 feet. Um, you know, and then on the tough ones, you just par them and par people to death. Uh, but if, if you're really, really comfortable throwing this disc and you can throw it, you know, 300 feet and you step up to a 250 foot hole, you may say, well, I don't really know much uh, about my mid range. So I'm, I'm going to throw my driver again, but I'm just not going to throw it as hard as I normally throw it. You know, let's say you normally throw at 90% effort. Uh, if you step down and throw this disc at 70% strength, you're probably going to mess something up mechanically. Okay, because when we're trying to back off on some power, you're going to lose that snap. Your timing's going to be off. Now, not guaranteed, but nine times out of ten, your timing is going to be off. You say, "Well, I'm just, I'm just going to baby my driver up there." You know, when you do that, you may, you, know, you may start rotating your shoulders too early. Your, your body uh, in disc golf relies a lot on muscle memory. So when you start changing your power level. 
what's going to happen is something's going to be out of whack. Your timing's going to be off a little bit. So this is what I encourage you to do. Don't power down, disc down. Instead of throwing a driver, throw at the same power, just throw a mid-range instead. You know, if, if, you're, if you're really cranking on the mid-range and you get to a hole that's a lot shorter than what you're throwing your mid-range, don't power down on your mid-range, throw a putter instead. Okay, so work on disking down instead of powering down. The idea here is to make sure that we're throwing with the same power, we have a consistent release, we have a consistent form, you wanna get your timing just right and keep replicating that over and over and over and over. Well, when you're powering down, something's gonna be off. So instead of powering down, disc down. Swap to a driver to a mid-range. Drop from a mid-range to a putter. And you should see that you're hitting those lines a lot more often. All right, guys, that's what I have for you in this video. I, I feel like it was crammed full of information. Uh, I try to keep it as short as I possibly could. Please uh, ask me any questions. Give me some feedback down below in the comments. And uh, have happy holidays and Merry Christmas, you guys. We'll see you next time.